the emptiness within the narcissist. When you're one of our victims, to put it mildly, it's a pretty shitty deal for you. Yes, you get all of the exciting golden period, unless you have the misfortune to have a bronze period. And during that golden period, if you've experienced the love bombing, you get all of the exciting stuff, the great sex, being taken out to wonderful places, being told how wonderful you are, you're supported, cherished, poetry is read to you, you're caressed, kissed, hugged, all of the things that cause your love devotee trait to flare up, your empathic traits to go into overdrive. And of course, as you know, all of that is entirely manufactured. It is fabricated as part of the illusion to draw you in, because we have to do that. We have to create something that's shiny, exciting and beautiful and warm and delicious and enticing and tasty and exhilarating and amazing to draw you in under our control to ensure that you do indeed become ours so that we can utilize you for the prime aims. But it is entirely a fallacy. And as I have explained in other work, you would do well to remind yourself of that. And of course, once that realization hits you, like cold, wet cod being slapped about your face, it hurts you. The devastation of that illusion becomes apparent to you. But it does not end there, does it? You will have suffered the pain of devaluation. Whether it is the sustained horror of the sustained devaluation meted out against the intimate partner primary source, or the staccato-like stabs and hooks applied to you by way of corrective devaluation where you are a secondary source, and alongside that, always being on the outside, never on the inside, waiting for the calls, wondering whether the narcissist will deign to interact with you, being the other man, the other woman, the mistress, the, the side piece, the affair partner. There is no genuine happiness in any interaction with the narcissist because in that golden period it's predicated on a fabrication and then of course devaluation, whether sustained or corrective, hurts you. From the punches and the slaps and the pushes and the choking to the emotional abuse to the psychological abuse to the financial abuse. On and on it goes. It wears you down. In some instances it brings you to your knees. In others it brings you close to that. The threat to person, mind, finance, security, safety, those around you that you love. This dynamic hurts you. Yet it doesn't even end there. The cruel disengagement, the huge gap that is created in your life, the jealousy as you see us riding off into the sunset with somebody else, with nary a glance over our shoulder. The harsh malign hoovers that occur as we brush you off. Stay away from me, you freak. Get lost, you nutcase. Stay the fuck away from me or I'm going to get a restraining order against you. And indeed, the visits from the police... The smearing, the, the posting of your nude pictures, the sex videos manifesting in certain instances, the hatred, the bile. And even where that does not occur post-disengagement, it will where it happens post-escape. And even where you find yourself in that post-disengagement period, what you will receive is a curled shouldering as you try to get answers, being ignored being triangulated if you happen to be in the same place as the narcissist and our new intimate partner primary source. The questions, always the questions. Why me? What did I do wrong? Why did this happen to me? Why does he have to be so brutal? Why won't she talk to me? How can I make it right? I still want to be with them. Maybe somehow we can sort this out. And then the other issues. The agony of continuing to co-parent, the recovery of money, the sorting out of property, 
the back and forth with friends and colleagues and families. The misery, the agony, the pain continues. And through all of this, whether you've escaped or been disengaged from, whether you're put on the shelf, sitting in that frozen waste, wondering when you might be taken off it, invariably, although you ought not to be doing this because it is a breach of no contact, but invariably you see that the narcissist is carrying on like he's having a jolly old time or that she hasn't a care in the world. The social media posts about how they're having such a wonderful time with the new person. That work is going well. Look at the new house I've bought. I found true love. This person understands me. All of the words and things that were said to you wrenched away from you and given to somebody else. Those long, lonely nights where illogically you still yearn for us if only to take some more of the drug to make the pain go away. It isn't fair, is it? It isn't fair that what was once golden was just an illusion. It isn't fair that notwithstanding the fact that you're a gentle, kind, honest, exciting, interesting, passionate person, you were treated so badly, devalued, and then either cast aside or if you were able to make your escape, the torment continued as it was sought to drag you back in and then punish you for your transgressions. Not only are you left buckled and broken, your nose is rubbed in it, as the narcissist just carries on as normal. How can somebody be so callous, not showing a shred of decency or care towards you, yet seemingly reveling in your misery whilst carrying on like nothing has happened? The repeated follow-up hoovers, coming along and pouring salt in the wounds, sucking up you once more, drawing fuel from you, just as you seem to be recovering. Why will we not leave you alone? All of this will resonate with you. All of this will cause you to think. The narcissist just seems to get away with it and it isn't fair. And this is where the thoughts of revenge come from, from warning the new victim, from talking to old victims, to countering the smearing, to letting the world know the truth of who this person is, to looking to grasp them up, to dob them in, to snitch on them, to cause them problems at work, to shove dog shit through the letterbox, to let down the tyres on their car. How many times have you wanted to see them crushed by a bus, hanging from a rope, falling off a cliff? Thoughts of revenge, just if only for a short moment to make this pain go away. It hurts, doesn't it? But remember this, that for everything that you see when you look upon that narcissist, even though you should not be doing, for all of the thoughts of imagining that he is with her, sunning themselves in Ibiza or in Aruba, sipping on their pina coladas, chuckling and laughing away, ensconced in their love which you fear is now genuine and that you've lost the chance. Understand that beneath all of this rests the emptiness. That howling wilderness, that chasm that sits deep within the narcissist, a chasm and a void that can never be filled. For the greatest of our kind and I, the ultra, we know it is there. And we do receive occasional reminders. But it doesn't cause us a significant problem because of the efficacy by which our fuel matrices operate. We are able to keep what lurks within that chasm at bay nearly all of the time. And even when it presents itself, it is quickly quashed by the waterfall of fuel that we are able to obtain. But for the lesser and mid-range, for all of the rictus grins that they exhibit, for all of those fixed poses plastered all over Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, you must understand this. Inside, they are empty. Inside them, as there is inside me, there is nothing. But this emptiness does not cause me complaint, because I am able to keep the emptiness of bay 
through the provision of fuel. But they, they are geared to do it, but their fuel matrices are smaller. They are not as complex. They face fuel difficulties. They face interruptions in the provision of this fuel. And therefore, each and every moment, they invariably, even if it starts as just as the slightest of nagging itches, it's there, the whispers of the creature. That sense of unease, a restlessness, that behind the face that smiles, the narcissism is working away, trying to ensure that fuel is extracted, that control is asserted, to ensure that this churning sensation, this nagging itch, the anxiety that builds, that can increase towards a sense of impending doom and something worse, has to be dealt with. Imagine that you have that itch that is never entirely scratched properly, the pain that never truly goes away. That is what the lesser and mid-range narcissists face. Admittedly, it does not pain them extensively all of the time but it remains like the dullest aches of a receding headache which can then come on throb more acutely so whilst you may be ensconced in misery bemoaning the fact that he has disappeared off to the bahamas taking his new paramour with him and leaving you mired in debt injury and hurt for all of the appearances plastered all over social media and the Billet Deux sent elsewhere, advising people of what a great time we're having out here. This is fantastic. Underneath it all lurks that emptiness. Underneath it all awaits the need for fuel, the need to assert control, that around each corner lies a threat which has to be asserted. And whilst this is not exhausting to the narcissist, as I have explained in a different video, it means there is no contentment, there is no rest, there is no satisfaction. And that whilst you may well feel miserable, think on that the apparent appearance of happiness is a fallacy. We do not experience happiness. We experience the product of fuel. And fuel either buoys us up and makes us immensely powerful, invulnerable, conquerors of worlds and universes, or it is there to quell that sense of doom, to keep the emptiness at bay for a few more hours yet, to scratch the itch, to ease the dread, to soothe away the anguish. And that is always there for each and every narcissist and is more acutely felt by the lesser and mid-range of our kind, hence why they are lower echelon. And you should realise, therefore, that this is what each narcissist has to deal with. So rather than look at the pictures, rather than listen to the recordings, rather than look out for those tidbits of gossip as to what the narcissist is up, rather than spend your time hoping for the narcissist to fail to fall flat on his or her face, remember, they have that emptiness to deal with. It is always there, and there are times when they are unable to deal with it effectively and they become plunged into the fuel crisis. You do not have that. Of course, for me, it presents no problem, and therefore I can be entertained as you can by the malfunctions and misgivings and complications that the scum that are the lesser and the mealy-mouthed cowardly wankers that are at the mid-range suffer. But keep that in your mind the next time you are bemoaning the fact that the narcissist has ridden off, leaving you into the, leading you in the dust. And if you want to understand even more of how that emptiness appears to even I, the ultra, utilize the link for the world of the narcissist, which you will find in the video description, and receive yet more information for your edification and education. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.